My name is Peter Karayas, and I'll be reviewing Fantasy Star 2 for the Sega Genesis. If there's one game I can say changed the way I thought of stories in gaming, it was Fantasy Star 2. Fantasy Star 2 was massive, involving an interplanetary conflict that made me feel like I was only a small cog in a grander machine. It was also one of the first JRPGs to take place entirely in a science fiction setting. The quest spanned two planets, had a cast of eight characters, and featured dramatic twists with some dark commentary on human nature. It also set the stage for titles like Xenogears and Star Ocean with its futuristic take on JRPGs rather than the fantasy background almost all had before then. While most science fiction games these days feature dystopias, Fantasy Star 2 was unique in starting you off in a utopia that seems pretty awesome on the surface. The geological implications of the world have a stronger impact if you played the first Fantasy Star and visited Motavia which was previously a desert planet. Think Dune, complete with giant sandworms, and you'll have a good idea of what it used to be like. A thousand years later, Motavia has transformed into a paradise. Many of the citizens you meet in the capital, Paseo, don't work and lounge in luxury. Everything is provided for by an AI system called Mother Brain. There's a techno-futuristic look to the townspeople with their varied hair colors and their art deco style. There's also a uniformity in their appearance which I now realize was the result of limited memory space, but originally attributed to the guided cultural conformity of a planned society. The world building in Fantasy Star 2 is fantastic, probably the best in any 16-bit era game. It isn't shoved down your throat, but naturally expressed through the environment. Your save states are actually data storage areas where you can store memories. If you die, you're not miraculously resurrected, but cloned by an eerie Joker-esque surgeon at the clone labs. Weapons are high-tech and include salesmen who look like punk rockers, and the available equipment ranges from guns to slicers and even the health potions have techie names like Monomate, Dimate, and Trimate. The music is upbeat and super catchy, representing the optimism that pervades. The people are carefree and indifferent to the woes of the world. Why should I work for a living? asked one kid. When tragedy actually strikes and monsters run rampant, the citizens are shell-shocked, not sure what they should do. Part of why the story works so well is because the social structure feels organic with each element propping up the utopian vision of the future. You, as an agent of the government, are fighting to protect seeming perfection. Rolf is haunted by nightmares involving the heroine of the first fantasy star, all presented in gorgeous anime fashion. Your first companion, Nay, is a half biomonster, half human hybrid who is also orphaned and forms a sibling like relationship with Rolf. Assembling a crew of companions that each had their own troubled past, you're given the task of finding out what's gone wrong with Mother Brain. For some unexplained reason, the biosystem is generating vicious monsters rather than the creatures that should be supporting the world. The first stretch of this narrative has always had particular significance for me. I was pretty young when a friend's older brother described the Space Odyssey to me. I initially was incredulous, and I had a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that he was describing an actual game. Until then, I hadn't seen the Sega Genesis, and the best RPGs I played were all on the NES, with primitive 8-bit graphics, and only the most basic of plots. What he was talking about seemed more like a movie or a science fiction novel. But he assured me it was real, and when I got to actually play it, I was in total awe. It was better than I could have imagined. For many gamers, Eris' death in Final Fantasy VII represents one of the first times they experienced a video game permadeath. For me, it was the death of Nei in Fantasy Star 2. Nei is your best friend, and she's also an incredible warrior. One of the most useful features in the game is that characters use both hands to attack. Bigger weapons like shotguns and swords require both hands, while smaller melee weapons allow dual attacks. Nei wields two claws and unleashes blow after blow on your enemies. For me, she always seemed to attack when I was weakest, dispatching foes in the nick of time. Battles were tough, but having Nei by your side felt essential, particularly as you dived into the mysteries of the biolab. Investigating the biolab is one of the creepiest sections in the game. 
The monsters are brutal and attack in relentless waves. Their stasis chambers everywhere contain skeletal embryos of bizarre creatures. You have to drop into the basement to recover the recorder with the data you need. When you return it to HQ, you discover the whole system has gone inexplicably awry. After a long quest involving underwater gum and a trek through the complex maze of the climate troll system, you reach the center, and someone who looks almost identical to Nay is waiting there. She introduces herself as Nay first, and explains she is a failed bio-experiment who is targeted for extermination by the humans. When they failed to kill her, she vowed vengeance and wreaked havoc through the monsters at the biolab. Your party gets ready to fight her, but she tells you if any harm comes to her, Nay will also die as their existence is conjoined. You have the option of avoiding battle if you wish, but the game won't progress unless you do. In the first part of the battle, Nay faces off in direct combat with Nay first. No matter how strong Nay is, Nay first kills her. At that point, the whole sequence switches to an animated cutscene as Nay mutters her last words before she passes away. I was sad, furious, and heartbroken. Rolf and your party face off against Nay first in a long battle, but even after you beat her, it doesn't change Nay's fate. It's a bittersweet turn, and you rush to the cloning factory to try to bring Nay back, but it's not possible. I've never had a party member I actually cared about die, and there wasn't any way I could change the outcome. I didn't know game developers were allowed to do that. I was angry at the humans who created Nay first, furious that I'd failed Nay, and confused now that the utopia was starting to implode after the climate control system was destroyed. Had I actually made matters worse? I think the biggest impediment to anyone interested in either playing Fantasy Star 2 or revisiting it is the endless grinding. The random combat is brutally repetitive and you will have to spend countless hours leveling up your characters just to make it through the next dungeon. I know that's a staple of JRPGs, but Fantasy Star takes that to the umpteenth level, making old school gaming downright masochistic. You will die a lot. There was one cheat I utilized when I was first playing it. If you bring up the dialog box with every step you take, you can actually avoid random encounters. That comes in pretty nifty if you run out of a telepipe or escapipe and barely have any HP left after a long grind session. Die and it's back to your last stored memory. I love the fact that the battles take place in a virtual battlefield with a Tron-like grid. You can program your attacks to automate them to a certain extent, even though you can micromanage each move if you choose as well. The animations are superb, both for the main character as well as the strange bestiary of foes. The 3D backdrop of the battles plays well with the futuristic theme, and the creature sound effects are some of the most unnerving ones around, giving each of them an alien vibe. For me, the best science fiction doesn't just present a fascinating new world, but gives us glimpses into human nature from a different, somewhat subversive perspective. As graphically advanced as the game was, None of it would have worked without the themes that propelled them. And the one theme that sort of comes up repeatedly is best summed up by one of the townspeople who states, What's most frightening is humans, not monsters. I love Fantasy Star 2, even with all the grinding, and I think it's one of the greatest JRPGs of all time. There's many different ways you can play it, so make sure to pick it up. And for the second part, I'll get into the ice world, the Zolas, as well as the most shocking ending of the 16-bit era.